Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 8th, 2021. Well, guys, if you hear my voice this morning, you know that I am a little bit on, well, feeling just a tiny bit under the weather, and I think it's just because of some nasty allergies, so I apologize if I sound a little odd. But how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle into our office chairs, buckle up, and let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So good morning once again, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I apologize for probably the way I sound this morning. It uh, probably sounds worse than I feel, um, but um, actually didn't uh, didn't get a blog written today just because of uh, just feeling kind of yucky this morning. So I apologize for that. But we're going to get through this morning prep video and we're going to see how we might want to approach the market for today. Let's take a look here at what's going on. First off, yesterday we had a pretty ugly sell-off in the Dow, but the SPY and the QQQ essentially ignored what was going on over there in the Dow. And this morning we've got a little bit of a gap down and bounce up. We had a little bit of overnight lows and we're trying to push up this morning here, as you can see in the Dow on this pre-market candle. But let's take a look at this and see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we may want to approach this market. If you guys remember yesterday, I mentioned the fact that I don't think there's going to be a problem here in the Dow unless this big black candle, um, if we drop below it, and that's exactly what we ended up doing yesterday. A little bit of a surprise attack here by the bears. So as you can see, let me redraw that. As you can see, we dropped down below some price support in that chart and closed just slightly below that price support. Let me draw a nice straight line across there and you can see right in there we're just just barely closed down below that level. So now this candle this morning showing a little bit of bullishness trying to push back up. What we're going to have to do is watch this price resistance level now that's been created by this consolidation. Um, we do have to recognize the fact here that as I draw this trend line up here we're setting right on that trend line and that push down that made the new low actually created that potential of a lower high in the chart. So a little bit of concern here on that that we're going to have to watch pretty closely. Um, Diamond's showing a little bit of weakness now and that little teeny bit of concern if we can't crawl all the way back up that could run us into some trouble and if you caught some of the news this morning um the mortgage applications came in um, substantially lower this morning um, mortgage apps dropped pretty hard um, once again and as a matter of fact um, the purchase application volume was 18 percent lower than the same week one year ago so we're running into a little bit of a stagnation in um, those mortgage apps and home sales and that could continue to create a little bit of a problem here in the market let's take a look at the spy 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 as you can see really can't tell that anything happened here and the reason that is the case is because we were um, elevated in the market almost strictly by the uh, the big techs. Uh, now Apple um, was the strongest of the bunch yesterday. Microsoft saw just a little bit of weakness, but the big tech giants are what lifted the SPY and the QQQ higher. So we have a little bit of that 
you know, the haves and the have nots here, which is kind of an interesting thing. But as we look across right in here, big techs did their job. They held this market up. And if you guys remember, I drew this trend line out here and we still have this constructive consolidation going on in this chart on the SPY. And as long as that can continue to hold, that support level in here i got to give this one up to the bulls and say the bulls still are in control although it is a really a glaring problem in the fact that there are so few stocks that are actually um, gaining that interest in the market and holding them up and the thing is they're very expensive stocks so it's leaving out um, that smaller investor that doesn't want to spend up um, so big on those big techs it's leaving a lot of those folks kind of sitting on the sidelines. So watch that closely. If we hold this support, I think we're in pretty good shape. If we were to break down below this level, that could raise some problems in the market. And if we can find that bullish energy to bounce right off of there, well, hey, there's no reason to think that we can't move on up, hit new record highs in the SPY. Let's take a look at the Q. Now, QQQ went ahead yesterday because of the big tech push, and we went up and we set a new closing high in the QQQ. Notice that this candle here was yesterday's candle. If we look right there, we just eked out a new closing high in um, the QQQ. So we set new records um, in that index and literally was lifted by about seven companies. Um, the rest of the NASDAQ was lower to sideways and just remarkable that um, we have tech companies large enough, seven or eight of them um, right now that have the ability to lift the entire index and give us kind of a false reading of what's actually happening overall in the market. But looking strong, looking ready to run. Let's take a look at, uh, and certainly could continue to push on through for new records. Then let's take a look. Oh, by the way, I, I would want to mention here, just make sure to realize that if those big techs find some reason to bring in some sellers, just imagine what could happen to the market with the rest of the market showing so much weakness if big tech were to join those. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM had a little bit of a pullback yesterday. And starting to sh this morning, sh starting to show just a little bit of bullishness. And we're holding on to this price support. So as long as we hold on to this price support, and as long as we hold up above that 50-day moving average, I think we're okay. But we do want to watch this pretty carefully with um, big tech not a part of IWM, this really needs that oil sector to hold up strongly. If oil starts to slip at all, that could be a problem here for IWM. Watch that closely. Now, if I were to draw this trend up here, notice we kind of broke this big upside trend. Um, or this steep upside trend. I shouldn't say big, but steep upside trend. But I think that's okay as long as we hold this support in here. If we can hold in here and then find that energy to push on through, I think we're in pretty good shape. If that were to slip, that could be a part problem. But I want to continue to point out that IWM, although we're bullish here at the moment, we have a tremendous amount of overhead resistance here in this chart. So this has still got a lot of work to break through to the upside. Let's take a look at the VIX real quick. And that VIX showed a little bit of fear creeping into the market yesterday. Notice we broke above our 50-day moving average here, closed above our 50-day moving average. So that does raise some eyebrows here just a little bit as that selling came in. Um, we also made just a little teeny tiny higher low here in the chart. Okay, so no big concerns yet, but we do want to pay attention to the fact that a little bit of fear has come in. And then once again, I want to remind everyone that I don't think this is going to be a real serious thing. Notice this huge level right around the 20 handle here in the VIX. I don't think it's probably going to make any major difference unless we were to break above that 20 level here 
and actually prove that higher low. If we can hold up in here, that's where we could run into some major problems. So keep a close eye on that VIX. Let's take a quick look at our T2122. Now T2122, as you guys know, is the four week new high, new low ratio. Whoops. Go. It's the four week new high, new low ratio. And I was warning and have been warning that when we test up here in these areas, that we run that potential that we could find some selling. And that's exactly what we got yesterday. Those sellers came in. Um, my guess is kind of responding to that jobs data um, on Friday, finally, uh, finally showing up to push down. And as you can see here, we closed just the day there's our midway in that T2122. So we did react to that bearish rever reversal zone up here in the chart. And what that tells us, if, if we can find enough energy um, in here uh, on the bullish side, we have plenty of upside potential um, now if we can find some bullish energy. If the bears continue to stand on the gas here, we certainly have more downside potential that could occur in this chart as well. So we're kind of right there in the middle of the road. And remember, T2122 doesn't tell us direction unless we're in these overbought or oversold um, places in the chart. Um, other than that, it's not going to tell us direction. So we're looking for inspiration. And one of the first data points out this morning was those mortgage applications were not exactly on the bullish side. So um, keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at our T2107. Now T2107, we're running into that problem. And you can see this problem that's in the market. This is the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average. Notice that we have now fallen below 50%. 50%, uh, more than 50% of the market is below its 200 day moving average. And we continue to fall in this downtrend. And that's what I meant by we have the haves and the have nots. And that is a kind of a, an interesting dilemma that we have in the market. Big tech is gaining all of the attention and holding the markets. But we're not seeing that translate into other stocks. So kind of an interesting thing going on here. Can big tech be enough of a lift? Can those seven to nine companies in tech have enough of a lift to push us or drag all of these companies back up? And they had started to do that, but yesterday kind of turned the tide, pushing us back down in a failure of this price support here as they continue to push lower. So watch that closely here in the market. Let's take a look at some of our um, um, stocks that are on the earnings calendar for today. And well, first off, let's take a look at our economic calendar. Now our economic calendar, we have a very light day today is, um, as the just a light week overall. Um, if you take a look, our mortgage applications came in um, in a negative number, um, continuing to show weakness on that front. And that little bit of weakness is really starting to show up in our consumer base here. So watch that closely. We have a jobs opening report this morning. And with the jobs opening um, report continuing to show lots and lots of jobs, but not many folks out there willing to take jobs, kind of an interesting dilemma going on. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. If that happens to show a lot of folks went out and got jobs this last time, that might actually help um, the market condition. So keep an eye on that. Then we have Beige Book. Um, we have a couple of Fed speakers that we'll want to be keeping an eye on because some of the Fed speakers are leaning more towards taper than it seems like Jerome Powell um, wants to um, lead, uh, wants to admit, I guess. So the some of the Fed speakers will want to keep an eye on those as they come out if they start pushing toward that taper side, that could be a little bit of a problem for the market as well. 
Um, how about our earnings calendar? We're all earnings, earnings calendar today. We have about 25, 26 companies on the calendar, but we have quite a few companies that are unconfirmed reports. But let's take a look at a few of these that are confirmed. We're going to hear from Restoration Hardware today. Restoration Hardware, as you can see, has been in a little bit of a downtrend. A good report on here could prove to hold price support, maybe get Restoration Hardware back on on um, on the upside move. We have AVAV that we'll, we'll be reporting today. Keep a close eye on this. Running this little upside trend in here, kind of capped by some price resistance in the chart. So this could be a very important earnings report to decide whether we're gonna pop that little wedge to the upside or break it down from here. We're gonna hear from Copart. Top art running into just a little bit of a problem yesterday with that selling, breaking some support in this chart and possibly creating a lower high um, in that chart. So watch that carefully. We do also have to recognize the fact that we're holding in this upside trend. So kind of that double-sided coin here, whether we can pop through or break down, that'll be interesting in that chart. We have CVGW. And the reason I'm going to go through on uh, this entire list this morning um, is because um, there's not going to be a blog today. So if you take a look here, CVGW, not exactly a good bullish chart. Um, this has been in an ugly, ugly downtrend, as you can see here. Not looking so hot here, so we'll want to keep an eye on that as uh, this reports. Um, perhaps we can get enough energy to break this downtrend and get things moving to the upside. We're going to hear from GME, the, um, the meme stock out here. Um, honestly, guys, I have no interest in this whatsoever. Um, GameStop is nowhere near worth $200 a share um, uh, by valuation. I mean, like nowhere near. Um, and maybe worth 10 or $15 a share, and they have pushed this to ridiculous levels in that meme. So, and no matter what happens here in earnings, I have no interest in it. Um, HQY, HQY also in that downtrend, gonna be reporting earnings today. Keep a close eye on that. Um, struggling in this downtrend, we need some kind of inspiration to get that moving. So perhaps HQY can get moving. We're going to hear from Lulu. Lulu is also running into a little bit of a problem. We've got this little double top and yesterday we kind of broke down that support here just a little bit. So watch that carefully. Lulu needs a good report to hold this price level in here. And last but not least, uh, CURV. CURV, a new issue, not exactly something that's particularly notable. We'll want to keep an eye on this as this reports today. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be useful, please do me a favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. I truly, truly appreciate that. It helps the algorithm to show these videos to more folks and then the channel continues to grow. And also big shout out to those folks that are continuing to utilize that uh, buy me a coffee link that's through the, um, right below the title of the video. And I just really want to say thank you to those of you that are supporting this kind of content without all the hype, without all the drama, without all the prediction. And um, I truly, truly appreciate that. So thank you so much, everyone. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And um, we want to be a little bit careful here because um, we have a lot of stocks that are showing weakness trying to come up off of bottoms, but there are some nice bullish charts out there to be aware of. Now, take a look at Kroger. Now, Kroger, Kroger is in a nice bullish pattern here. However, we do have a problem with this chart. If this can get moving here today, we might end up with a nice bullish setup in that chart. 
but I want to point out the problem here and that's earnings on Friday. So keep a close eye on that as we set up here for earnings and it's not odd for a stock to rally toward earnings but we want to watch that closely. Um, um, it may be a bit of a high risk trade into that earnings event or oh, I'm picking it up right into that earnings event anyway so watch that closely. You might want to take a look at AMD. Now AMD is in an interesting little pattern here and I've placed a price alert on this chart and although we've kind of there's that trend although we've kind of drifted out here beyond that trend I'm looking for that opportunity that AMD might find a way to move higher. And I'll tell you honestly what I want, what I'll probably be doing um, today is I'll probably be moving this alert down a little bit tighter. Just in case that happens to pop up in here, I can catch that early entry in the chart. Big Tech has been very strong and there's no reason to believe that AMD can't find that interest um, in here. And if it can find that bullishness, I would expect a lot of folks to try and pile in on that move because it's the being uh, big tech is just being so recognized um, in these markets. Um, other places that you might want to look, by the way, Kroger is a consumer defensive sector stock. I want to show you a trade that Rightway Options is in right now. We are in Altria. Um, Mo has been really, really strong in this rally. And what I want you to notice right here, at least for now, guys, what we're doing is we're consolidating we're consolidating just right above or right below this price resistance in the chart. So we've got this little area here. And as you can see, not too many people want to sell this. And this is a big dividend payer. And when the market starts getting uncomfortable, um, stocks like Altria do pretty well. So keep an eye on this. If this can hold this area right in here, we might see that next opportunity for that to pop right on through, continue moving up and attack these highs in the chart. Watch that close on Altria. Now, again, I have to tell you that I am in this, so I have a bias on this. So don't, don't blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas okay just put that on a list and see if that makes some sense to you take a look at stocks that are in that defensive sector we all of a sudden got a big hit yesterday on some of those defensive sector stocks big ugly sell-off here in that chart so if you are wanting to be bearish notice that we have a failure at a lower high here and that possibility of some shorting coming into some of these stocks. So watch that carefully here in that chart. Some of the some defensive stocks um, really took a hit yesterday. So kind of an interesting dynamic going on in the market. You may want to take a look at some stocks like Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble possible double top or lower high failure here in this chart. Notice we pushed down, we broke support, rallied back up, we're unable, at this point, unable to attack that high up there and break through. This is that possible shorting point in the chart where Procter & Gamble could move on down to set a new low and that's exactly how a downtrend begins. So keep a close eye on that. You might want to take a look at PayPal. PayPal is in a very bullish pattern and as you can see extended on up yesterday. PayPal looking good, holding that price support, showing some strength here to the upside. I don't know that I would want to chase this um, first thing this morning. Maybe let this rest or pull back toward trend again, but keep a close eye on that. PayPal is kind of defying the um, the things going on in other pay systems like Visa. Notice how weak Visa is. Um, and MasterCard, extremely weak. But PayPal is defying that, staying very, very strong here. So watch that closely. Um, has that opportunity to continue moving on higher. Take a look at MRNA, Moderna. Moderna showing lots of strength here, trying to break through, not trying, has broken through. We had a constructive consolidation in here. Showed lots of bullishness yesterday, pushing on up. Now, I don't think I'd want to chase this. Look how many days that this has moved up to break through that level. So what I'd want to do on this chart is now watch for that next rest 
pullback consolidation in here to hold that support and then look for my opportunity to enter that chart for that move back up here to the upside. I want to continue to point out stocks in the healthcare sector. Healthcare has had this little resting pullback. We're dealing with this price resistance high up here, but notice that we're dealing with that in a rather productive way. Hammer pattern yesterday. If we can find some bullishness in here today, watch for that opportunity that healthcare stocks could break out to new highs. You'll want to keep an eye on that. And if we take a look at real estate, Real estate also holding in a nice little resting pullback here after breaking through to new highs. Real estate is one of those safe haven plays when the market gets a little bit concerned. And I think what we're seeing here is a rotation. Um, institutions, I think, are rotating to more of these safe haven plays. Um, defensive type sector stocks. We're seeing more bank warnings out there of a potential sell-off. So just be careful here, but I think there may be an opportunity that we could find some price support. I don't know where this trend may end up. We may rest here a few days before we get that opportunity to go on up, but keep an eye on that. And if we take a look at utilities, utilities struggling along after breaking through, holding some support, keep a close eye on this. If we can hold this support area in this chart, there is that opportunity this could start to perk up. So watch that closely and carefully. So there's a few stocks for you to pay attention to. Remember guys, don't blindly follow anybody's trade ideas. Make sure that you are doing your own due diligence. It's not a wise idea to, um, to just take someone else's suggestion and run with it. Make sure you're doing your due diligence there. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day in your trading. I want to wish you great results. And I want to um, just share out there with everyone. Be safe, be careful, have a great day, and we'll see you right back here, bright and early Thursday morning. Thanks, everyone, for putting up with my gruff voice here today. Take care, y'all.